Welcome to our Five on Five. We're pleased to welcome in Jenny Mena, U.S. Bank Senior Vice President of Security, Intelligence, Engagement, and Awareness. Jenny, thanks for being here. Pleasure Thank to you meet for you having today. me. So you're, you're in town. You spoke to the Chamber Forum recently. What did you talk about? Well, we wanted to talk to the local business community about navigating the cyber risk landscape. So we talk a little bit about threat. What are the threat actors out there and how are they attacking businesses? How does U.S. Bank protect our customers, corporate and individual? And then steps that businesses can take to protect themselves and their customers. Mm, okay, and, and what about families? What are the top things that us as individuals in our private mm -hmm. lives or, or people watching at home for their families, what can they do to keep themselves safe online? Absolutely, and there's some very simple things that you can do that aren't technical and don't require you to go and buy anything. Um, first, passwords. I think we all know now your password should be longer, it should be complex, it should have letters and numbers, special characters, shouldn't be password. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's important, but it's also important not to reuse your password. It seems like you need a username and password for just about everything these days, whether you're signing up for a local 5K or whether you're volunteering you know, for snacks for your kid's school on some sign-up application. Sure. Um, everybody wants a password. If you use the same password for everything though, right, because the bad guys realize that it's a pain to have all these, they will, if a website is compromised, they'll try to either use that information to get into other websites using your credentials or sell it to other criminals who will do the same thing. So if you use the same password for those school signups that you use for online banking or that you use at work, um, they might be able to use that information. So don't reuse your password across accounts and also change your password regularly. Mm. Something else you should do along those same lines is be cautious what you're putting on social media. So you know those challenge questions you have if you forget your password. Um, where did you go to high school? What's your favorite pet's name? What's your sibling's name? Think about the information that you're putting out there on Facebook and other social media sites. So you really want to be careful that the answers to those challenge questions aren't available to the public. You really want to set up strong privacy filters and think about what you're posting. Hmm. And then finally, I would say you and your children, your family should be suspicious. Um, most successful compromises that happen in cyberspace happen through something called phishing with a PH. It's when you get an email that looks like it's coming from somebody, but it's really coming from somebody else. And maybe they want your username and password or some personal information about you. So when you get emails, really look carefully at it. Um, if it says it's coming from your bank and you need to change something about your account, mouse over that email address where it's coming from. Um, if it seems unusual that someone is contacting you that way, for example, one of your providers about your mailbox being over the size limit, right? Again, mouse over, think mm -hmm. twice. Also be cautious of phone calls. Um, if, you, if somebody does contact you saying you're there from your bank or your credit card company, call the number on the back of the card mm -hmm. um, or go to their official website. Interesting, okay. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll have much more in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're talking with uh, about cybersecurity with Jenny Mena from US Bank. So new technologies, it seems like uh, there's always something popping up like uh, Apple Pay, Android Pay, that we can, we can do things. Are these things safe? You know, they are. Um, when we use our phones for payment um, they, for things like Apple Pay, they use something called tokenization, which actually replaces your credit card number where they generated each time number, right? So it's not your credit card information going back and forth. It's something that's used only once. And your credit card information isn't actually stored in the phone. It's these tokens. So you don't have to worry about your credit card information being stolen. It's encrypted when it's sent back and forth. Mm. Um, also, the benefit in these technologies is they tend to use biometrics, right? You use your fingerprint. And the biometrics are always more secure than a username and password. Certainly. OK. Uh, well, how can people protect their businesses from ransomware? I know this is something you talked about at, at the forum. It is, and it's really scary. And what ransomware is, um, you get an email that says, we have compromised your computers. It might be something that happened to you at home. It might happen to you at your business. Mm -hmm. um, we've locked up all of your data so that you can't access it. You can't use your systems unless you pay us X amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, this new crime is really on the rise. The FBI was estimating this was going to be about a billion dollar criminal enterprise in ransomware this year. So what can you do? Um, um, again, be suspicious. Watch out for those phishing emails at work as well as at home. Um, but also update your software, which again is important at, at home too, right? Update to the latest version. That, that's where they patch vulnerabilities. Um, and then I would also say in case the worst happens and you do get one of these ransomware attacks, you want to be prepared, right? So you want to have backed up your data. You want to do it regularly and you want to store that offline so you can restore mm -hmm. if you can't get into what they have locked up. And have a plan in place. Talk this through. Um, be prepared. How would you deal with local law enforcement? What would you do as a company if something like this happened to you? 
Okay, and I understand there are a couple schools in, in Oregon that, that are specializing in cybersecurity. It's a booming field. It really is. Um, there was one statistic, um, according to Forbes, that over a million open positions are out there around the world in cybersecurity. So great wow. opportunity, all different kinds of jobs, not all super technical. And you are fortunate within Oregon. There are two schools that have been designated by the National Security Agency and Department of Homeland Security as Centers of Academic Excellence. Those are the University of Oregon and Mount Hood Community College. So those centers are always great sources of talent for your business in building up your cybersecurity capabilities. Well, great to meet you. Thank you so much for coming to Southern Oregon. Thank Pleasure. you. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back.